beginning we started very small with working with a small group of women and trying to create this safe space for for women and children and that kind of grew and grew and grew and grew and grew and then we noticed like now with um, Tempelhof being like all the people are going to be re relocated to they're building this container village for instance so all people are yeah moving out from Tempelhof so at this stage uh, it was important for us to not only do the kind of uh, project work as in you know the, the dancing the singing the um, the art things, but really mobilizing the people within the shelter to, you know, talk to local politicians, be part of the decision making process with what's going to happen later. So, and we all of a sudden ended up in a, a sort of political role uh, where we are now, I don't know, amplifying their voices and getting organized with them and uh, involved in that very important process deciding how they're going to live the next couple of years. And uh, there was a lot of anxiety and a lot of what was going to happen, like what is going on, like we have no information, we don't know where we're going to live, we don't know what are they even building outside here. So um, through that, uh, we then started digging around, f finding information what was even going on because there was a lot of rumors, nobody knew, there was a lot of disinformation and, and then uh, yeah, started interviewing them um, with what would your needs and wishes, what would they be for this new container village. We, have for a very, very long time been building up trust with the people in there. And um, yeah, because it takes a long time for people to kind of speak up, like you're already, you're in a vulnerable position. One of the things that maybe would surprise people that if you read this list, what the residents in Tempelhof would like to have, uh, or like uh, want to uh, communicate with the politicians, and it's, it's very, basic thing. <laughs> I was going to say the surprise I think isn't necessarily with the uh, with the demands of the people um, that are about to move there. The surprise lies within the fact that these apparently aren't uh, taken into uh, taken um, aren't done naturally or aren't uh, given. Um, so for example people are uh, desperate to be able to receive visitors uh, without going through uh, a huge bureaucratic process. When the residents brought forth that they want to and need to be able to um, kind of stay in touch with family members that are spread across Germany or even spread across different parts of town, mm. um, politicians were going like, oh, but it's totally perfect, uh, it's perfectly um, possible to, to receive visitors and when it cle clearly wasn't because um, all of these processes are in the hands of private companies that run the shelters and, and container villages. Even like super simple things like please put, you know, elderly close to the washing machine so they don't have to walk a long way to, you know, super practical things like please put in a fan so we won't uh, half die of heat stroke uh, um, during warm days in the summer. It's, it's, it's really, it's very, very practical things and then it's, yeah, mm. more social. Um, and, and things that are really, really easy to implement once you have that dialogue between the people who are responsible for setting the place up and the people who have to actually live there. Um, it's just that without the pressure from from our side and from the side of the community, um, these, this dialogue wouldn't even take place. So. And I think one of the most important um, uh, wishes they had were like, please include us in the dialogue, what's going to happen? Mm. And yeah, that says quite a lot.